Hey, 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 it's Deanne here. Happy Monday. Today, I want to talk a little bit about gas and bloating. I know this can be a very common symptom for so many people. All of us have had it at some point or another, and some of us have it every day. Some of us may not feel well after any of our meals. We may feel like our clothes don't fit because we're distended or we're having that kind of kind of abdominal pain after eating. Maybe it's belching or burping, or maybe it's gas. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do about gas and bloating. All right. So first we're going to go through why you actually have gas and bloating. And there's many different reasons. So we're going to go over each of those and then what you can do. So first off, you can have irritation in your GI tract. So again, your GI tract runs from your mouth all the way down to the other end. And it's lined with cells. And we don't want anything and everything to be able to go through the wall of the intestines. We, we're very selective of what can move through. But we can irritate this lining and the cells in the lining by drinking a lot of caffeine, by drinking alcohol, by eating sugar, by eating foods that we may have an allergy to, um, processed oils. So there's lots of different things, stress, there's lots of different things that can irritate those walls. So that can actually cause gas and bloating. Moving on, lack of enzymes. So we have many enzymes. We have enzymes that start in our mouth. Then we have enzymes in our stomach. The pancreas releases enzymes. So there's lots of different things that are going to be breaking down our food into smaller particles. So we can actually get the vitamins and minerals out of what we're eating. But if we don't have the right enzymes, then a lot of times we're not breaking down those foods. And then there's going to be more gas and bloating that is going to be produced. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but that is another reason. Bile. Bile is something that the liver makes, and then it is sent to the gallbladder. And when we eat fat, we have bile that kind of squirts out as needed, and that breaks down the fat that we eat. So if we are not producing enough bile, if it's not being released properly from the gallbladder, then again, you can have gas and bloating. And stress. Stress is a big one. And again, it goes back to it can really irritate those walls of the intestine. Stress, the main problem with stress is that when you're stressed out, you are in the sympathetic nervous system. You're in that fight or flight. Your body's ready to run or fight somebody. And that is not the system that our digestive system needs to be in. So Therefore, the digestive system doesn't work properly. So everything is kind of thrown off if you're stressed while you're eating. So that's definitely something to remember. We really have to figure out the best way for you to handle your stress. And imbalance in the microflora. Your microflora lives mainly in your your large intestine, your colon. And we have lots of different types of bacteria there. But if those varieties can be off, we need really high levels of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. And then we have lots of others underneath that. But if all the levels are off, then again, that can cause a problem because that bacteria is eating a lot of food and can be causing some of that gas and bloating. And parasites or candida. You probably have heard of parasites. Those are different types of worms that can actually be in our system that can be problematic. And most of the time we don't even know they're there. And then candida is a type of yeast that we can get in our body. And what happens is, is yeast feeds on sugar. So when the yeast wants to eat, the yeast is going to give you signs that you need to take in more sugar. So you're actually going to get sugar cravings. And then when that yeast has more sugar to eat, it causes gas and bloating. And lastly, SIBO, um, that is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. As I said before, the majority of our bacteria is in our large intestine. But of course, there's a little bit in the small intestine. But when things aren't going right in the system, then that bacteria can actually back up from the large intestine into the small intestine. So if you've got lots of bacteria there that's not really supposed to, they're gonna start eating the food as it comes down. And that's gonna be able to, it's gonna cause more gas and bloating again, okay? So those are a bunch of reasons 
why um, you could be having gas and bloating. It could be stress. It could be what you're eating. It could be that you have a lack of certain enzymes. So let's talk about what you can do. All right. So what you eat. Dairy is usually the food group that is most commonly a cause of gas and bloating. And because as we get older, we don't really have the enzyme to break down the dairy. So we can it can cause a lot of gas and bloating. So if you're having a lot of it, I recommend that you do a little experiment and you try to eliminate dairy from your diet and see if that helps. Other things you can eliminate, lots of sugar lots of processed foods. If you eat beans and beans seem to cause a problem, beans have so much healthy um, parts to them. You can soak them. So if you're using a can of beans, I always recommend that you pour them into a colander. So you are basically draining the water and then you run them under water or have them sit in water and you keep basically changing the water. So basically some of those, um, the problems in the beans will, will, it'll decrease the gas and bloating that you'll get from them. You can also cook the beans with something called kombu, K-O-M-B-U. It's a type of seaweed. It comes in a dried form and you just rip a little bit off or cut a little bit off and you can drop it in the, um, however you're cooking your beans. And that will also decrease the gas producing part of the beans. So that's all about what you're eating. Now let's talk about how you eat. Well, let me, now there's so many things I got to do now. I got to hide that and show that. All right, how you eat. So again, you need to be in the parasympathetic nervous system in order to eat. You have to be calm, because that's the only time that your body actually can digest food. So breathing when, if you're making your own food, then it's really nice to just breathe or make your food to music, dance around, then you'll be calm and you'll be in that parasympathetic nervous system. If you're not making your food and you're getting it as takeout or sitting down or something, it's very nice to be just eating and not doing other things. And then that will also help you be in that parasympathetic nervous system or just stop and pause before you eat. Take a couple of deep breaths in, and then you want to eat slowly, okay? You want to take a bite of food and chew and chew and chew and chew. That's really, really important because we want to break down the food to the smallest particles because the larger the food, again, the more gas producing it can be. And then lastly, let's talk about before and after you eat. So before you eat, if you are worried about its enzymes for you, then before you even go out and try to buy digestive enzymes, you can always use apple cider vinegar because that can stimulate your hydrochloric acid in your stomach and your other enzymes that will help break down your food particles. So you can take a glass of water and take, if you want to Go ahead and put a tablespoon. You can, if you're a little worried about that, you can start with a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and you drink that before your meal, okay? And that will help stimulate your enzymes to start releasing. So as you eat the food, then it can break the food down. Also limit your water intake. If you're gulping down, if you're talking blah, 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 and then you're drinking water in between your meal, you can also be taking in a lot of air and that can cause a lot of burping and that can cause some gas and bloating as well. So limit your water intake while you're eating. And then it's always nice to go for a just slow walk after you eat. So you're not just eating and then going and lying down because that can be a problem when you're lying down right after you eat and your food is still, you know, getting broken down and trying to move down into the stomach. You can actually have some problems with acid reflux. Alrighty. So there are some ways to prevent gas and bloating. If you have any specific questions, let's see if anybody has any questions. I don't see any. So you can always post them later underneath the video and I will come back and answer them. And please let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like me to talk about on these lives. I always want to make sure it's something that you actually want to hear about. So just 
post that, post what you'd like for me to talk about. All right. I hope you have a wonderful Monday and a wonderful rest of the week, and I will see you later.